Hey everyone, today, EV number six, we're gonna tackle what everybody loves, wiring. All right, so I'm gonna explain what I've done, but first I'm gonna go ahead and put a montage playing over there of me putting this together so you can just kind of see what order I did that in. Um, but as you're seeing that happen, what you can see is I'm throwing a lot of wires over here that are just not being terminated right into these, uh, these Haltech connectors. And what those are, those are all the common wires. So things like um, uh, five volt sensor, as well as uh, sensor grounds. And the other things I'm throwing over there are things like uh, injector power, ignition power, all, all the power rails. Um, the reason I'm doing that is so that I don't end up with multiple splices. So I don't have to forget, oh, did I think about the fact that the mass airflow needs two grounds? You know, maybe I would have just pulled one ground because frankly, I did forget about that um, because this is actually acting as two sensors, not one. It's the intake air temperature as well as the mass airflow sensor. Well, by having them just all dangle over the edge right there and I just use masking tape to mark what their purposes, then I just regroup them all together at the end and put them in the appropriate places. Now things, uh, it also allows things like uh, some decisions at the end. If you look at the, uh, the Haltech wiring diagram, you'll see there's actually three pins for signal ground. Um, and there's a link to this PDF down in the description, by the way, if you, because you probably can't see it on the screen. And in that case, right, so I, um, signal ground they're probably all connected internally in the ECU, but I still want to use them for a different purpose. So I'm using one is going to here for the uh, drive-by wire ground. The other one is for the uh, the cam, oh, sorry, cam position as well as the crank position sensor. So that's another thing that is sensitive. I want to keep isolated. And then the other one is for everything else on the motor, which in this case is going to be uh, intake air temperature, mass air flow, ignition coils, and uh, coolant temperature sensor and uh, throttle position sensor for the, uh, the drive-by wire. So you can decide to split those up however you'd like, but that's how I like to split them up. The other really nice thing I like about using the Haltech ECU is first thing you should do is you should go in and configure how you think your engine's gonna run. And it's super nice because like, for example, on this uh, oil pressure switch, this oil pressure switch goes between closed and open. So if you don't put a pull-up resistor on here, then you end up with, you don't get a signal. It just It's just floating, which is usually gonna be about zero volts and closed, which is definitely gonna be zero volts. So by putting it in the computer first, I can make sure, because the first uh, analog input that I put it in didn't have a pull-up. So I went ahead and just picked a different one and I could see it in the menu. Like you can see it right here. This one has it and this one doesn't. So I pick the one that it has and then I print out this report and it tells me where everything gets plugged in. Then between that and I've got a cheat sheet here, um, again in the description, but cheat sheet here up on the screen. This is for all the multi-pin connectors, what each wire does so that I can make sure I put it to the right place. But other than that, I'm not actually working from a wiring diagram. This is all just one point to one point. Uh, and I'll, I'll just work kind of in, uh, in order of function. So first I start with all the ignition coils, then with all the injectors, um, and I forget exactly what order I did this in, but then I think I went to the coolant temperature sensor, then the charging system, then the cams, then the crank, and it, you just kind of take, just take one subsystem at a time, and next thing you know, you've got this giant bundle here that is really scary to look at at first, but it's really not that big of a deal. Um, and also you can see in that part of the video here that this bundle is just a giant rat's nest at first. And that's, that's normal because wiring lets you hide an absolute ton of crimes. Don't worry too much about the wiring because what you're going to do afterwards, you're going to cut all those zip ties off. And as I've done here, you're just going to take these connectors and you're going to start with whatever connector, whatever connectors has the most wires and you just kind of push the slack down the line until you get just this neat harness. And you can see, here, let me, uh, let me just Wait. show you. You can see, see that brown wire right there? I had a little bit too much of it. So I just did that. That's not a big deal. And you can kind of see there's 
some there's some more wires kind of turning back on themselves here. Um, you know, there's here where the wires end up, they kind of wrap around themselves a little bit and that kind of takes up some slack. It's not hard to hide things. Now this one here is intentional and I should point it out, this is the power to the number one ignition coil. You always want to do this because on one of these coil unplugs, you can't actually put an inductive sensor, an inductive pickup on the output of this, but an inductive pickup on the power input will actually give you the exact same thing. So that allows you to time the motor and everything. Technically, yes, there's a delay between this and when it actually fires because it takes power and then it fires. But at 600 RPM, that delay is inconsequential. And then the other part of the wires that are dangling over the edge here ends up being the chassis integration stuff. So I personally really like reusing these Toyota connectors. I've got piles of harnesses in my back room, but if you don't have that, uh, what I suggest you do, you know, there's these, uh, actually the, the Deutsch connectors, these are basically the best connectors you can get, uh, like Haltech is using on here. They're a little bit spendy, but you can buy whatever you need in however many pins you need. Um, if I didn't have all those harnesses back there, that's what I'd be using. Um, then the steps that aren't covered here, um, I will be looming. So just added convoluted tubing on top of all of this. And anything that's going to be exposed to possible abrasion, I'm going to use this Tessa tape. Again, all of this stuff, link in the description if you want to see it. Uh, where abrasion is not a problem, I'll use the Super 88. Really good stuff. It stays actually, it, it sticks. Well, let's see, what does it say it's rated for? Uh, zero degrees Fahrenheit to 221 Fahrenheit. And yeah, that's, this stuff stays actually pliable in the cold so it doesn't just peel off. It is super nice. Uh, and of course, I want to make that wiring harness as light as possible. So, you know, one of the questions that'll come up is why didn't I use something like that, that Tefzel wire that's available? Well, if you look at the TXL spec, which is what most modern cars use, um, the T stands for thin, and definitely these modern Japanese cars use, it's really, yes, technically the TXL is thicker insulation than the Tefzel stuff, but it's almost identical. The, the weight per foot is almost identical, and by reusing the Toyota harness, then I can, I can sit here and I can crimp all of these wire, all of these terminals on for the ECU side, which which is nice because there's only, you know, two, well, there's one type of terminal, but there's two different sizes. Whereas on the motor, you've got, you know, a dozen different terminal types and finding crimpers for all of those and finding all the terminals is just a whole lot of work and expense that just doesn't need to be done. Then some of the, uh, the extra wires there hanging up over the edge are these chassis integration stuff. So here again, um, I used, uh, I've got a whole pile of Toyota harnesses in the back room, so I just picked some that I had both sides of, and I used those for chassis integration as I went, just kind of taking notes, um, taking notes, yeah, like this, of exactly what I pinned where so that I would know for later what the pinout of those are. Um, nothing too special, basically, I split it up into this is power, and this is going up to the dash. So this is mostly the accelerator pedal as well as it has. So this is the, uh, the, the Haltech can. Well, the Haltech can also goes here and that allow me to have my uh, digital dash up there. And then when I'm connecting multiple wires together, you can see this is what I use. I've got all these uninsulated uh, butt crimp connectors just in all kinds of different sizes. And then I put this heat shrink on it and it's especially important that this heat shrink be the kind that has glue inside of it because that'll keep all the weather elements out of it and you're not going to end up with wires that corrode. Then in order to fire the whole thing on the bench here, um, I made this quick impromptu gas tank. It holds, you know, no, oh, I can't see anything in there, but it holds about a quart and a half, maybe two quarts of gasoline. And that is actually just an MR2 Spider pump, but it's got a gasket there that sits right on that ridge and actually makes a nice seal. Uh, for the wires, because I don't want sparks around here, I did cover them in heat shrink and just slipped them on. Now, it'd be ideal if I could find the connector for that, but I can't seem to find a spare in my collection, so that'll work. So at this point, all that's left is to show you guys that it works. So I made this connector right here. This is 
my battery power input and this is the starter so it, this needs to be a fuse box but for the sake of this basically this is going to power the ecu the ignition coils the injectors yada yada everything so i'll just have to touch this to trigger the starter and it should run first we do have to our fuel pump relay is not installed so we have to manually start our fuel pump and here things initializing Yeah, so that gas tank, that temporary, you know, one and a half to two quart gas tank is something I should have done a long time ago. Usually I would pull up a working car and just jump over the fuel pump relay and use its fuel line, but that just makes for a mess. This is something I should have done a long time ago, plus super easy to empty so that there's no fuel that stays in there long term. Um, that way I'm always using fresh fuel when I'm test firing an engine, because the last thing you want is old fuel making your motor hard to start and then you don't know. Is it my wiring? Is it my fuel? And sometimes you won't even think about your fuel. So it, it, this, this is great. This is definitely going to stay in the collection. Um, I will be making a second wiring harness. Uh, that way both of the race cars use the exact same wiring and they will have the exact same pin out. It'll just make debugging things a little bit easier in the future. Um, I do like making my wiring harnesses like this on the actual engine. It ends up giving the wire the the proper shape so you're not sitting there kind of manhandling it later to, to give the twist and yeah there's ways you can build harnesses for motorsports that will have a lot more flexibility and everything but that's that's a whole other level more equipment and a lot more time than what i'm willing to put towards this and then next we've got camshafts so i needed to get this out of the way before i could get to camshafts but now now that that's all out of the way i get to play with these guys so I'm really looking forward to that hopefully you guys are too and um, a quick update about the transmission uh, I've made a decision I'm gonna go ahead and run the E153 for now but in the background I'm gonna take that E350 that I've got and I'm gonna see how much it's gonna cost to get dog gears in there as well as a spool because I think I want the weight savings and I just it's it's a smaller lighter transmission the 24 was it 24 26 pound weight savings is definitely worth it on this car because i'm trying to get this thing up to right around 2,000 pounds so we're going to do that but we're not going to let that stop us because it'll probably be several months before i can have those parts because i gotta probably send out to get those made um, and i want the car to be able to run in the meantime so e153 it's going to be until then all right so we'll see you guys in the next video have a good one Oh, we're just going to wait a second for the plane to pass by now, aren't we?